lost now two members in the panel. Uh, but there were some, some questions before we, we cut off, so maybe we start again. Jay, you had some, some things in, in addition, I think. <laughs> okay. It's okay, you can speak. <laughs> yeah, I, I have just one commentary. I, I think that uh, what uh, Vivo showed now, it's, it just brings the, the basic user interface that everybody's using to transmit to another level. It's, it's a great work. I think it's something that being part of this meeting for the fourth time now, as much complaint as we heard for the first and the second meetings now, uh, the Transmart, you know, it, it becomes like a completely uh, different tool in terms of uh, uh, appealing for new users to come and use it. I think it's a, it's a very memorable achievement for the team that developed it, together with the other plugins that will be uh, created as well. I think it's great. I have a question about the, the um, user interface. Now, if there are more and more plugins coming, do we have a guideline for the look and feel? Or otherwise you run into the problem that we get all kinds of different v look and fields. Um, at, at the moment, we don't have, um, have a guideline, but we have uh, like a boilerplate you can use mm. to add your plugin into the, into the UI. And we're actually still working on how to, like well, what this should look like for different plugins. Mm -hmm. yes. What is the current, sort of current plugin landscape look like? Should not. I think it should not be like this. I think because uh, many features, for example, the things that you are developing and the things that many other people are, they should be able to uh, to be plugged in the platform. Maybe in a separate button, in the sense is not R. But uh, the roadmap that have been established until now, so far, for the development of a smart R and uh, like the the the, the change the changes from the back the the, the past interface to the new interface. They should be followed because there is already a roadmap established there. But I think that uh, you know you should allow different uh, plugins be implemented there. I think that's the the I mean a little bit of the spirit of the open source community as well, right? Not restricting. <laughs> Yeah, so um, one thing about the plugins that we're trying to do here is uh, we're trying to use the RESTful API. And um, this is moving away from the, the old architecture where everything is just plugged into Grails. Um, and this is just one plugin that you can use. Uh, and it's um, primarily aimed at cohort selection and the usage in the, of the cohorts in the, in the advanced um, workflow. But there's, for example, also uh, the GWAS functionality or the genome browser or well the, the plugin that Adriano showed. Mm -hmm. uh, each, each of these plugins can also uh, be a, a standalone app that uses the REST API and talks to Transmart in that way. And I think that uh, what this base UI or what the glowing bear is showing is that it's um, that's a, a, a really nice way to, to structure these plugins from now on. I think we should try to constrain ourselves into the base UI, the glowing bear UI, and just stay just using the small and things that take the input. Yeah, because if you think initially, right, on the workflows available for Transmat, that they were all written in R, so you were somehow forced to, to develop your method, your analytical method in R, 
And once it's going to be available, let's say, in a bioconductor fashion, you could in include this in the Transmart interface. I'm talking about the old versions, right? So if you write something in a completely different programming language, it's going to be another a nightmare to integrate to the platform. So then we have to think always about uh, right, the technology that you're using to develop the methods and how you could integrate this as a plugin in the new interface that's being developed now. Yeah. Yeah. The interoperability, I think, it, it's dependent on the results of your analysis being available in the server, so that they can access from my plugin to that. For ex yeah, please. Yeah. So, so some of it I can imagine is if you move forward with reducing your data size, but then as you go into another tool, then they want to expand back from that. So I think however you build it, you can have a lot of view on that. Sure. Yeah, sure. So it didn't show up, but there's also the scale change is pretty good too. Yeah, but we have to consider, yeah, you have to consider that different analyses for the smart art are also developed for different purposes. Now, for example, you don't make a survival curve by using gene expression data. So I want to add that actually using a simply different type of um, selector data on REST API means fully distributed, uh, separate data analysis possible by communicating with the transmart. For example, you can run your you know, the big analytics on the cloud, then that actually can communicate with the transmart. It actually opens 
So if you take, for example, the, the interface that was presented before for the brain mesh, um, you can see that you have you are running there two main graphs for navigation on the data only. Uh, it's like the expansion bar graph and the hierarchical tree that was presented is only for navigation purposes. But the others, they are separate plugins on, the, on that interface as well. So you have uh, the Corona tools, you have Cytoscape web, the edge bundling t tree, uh, D tree, and have also finally the mutations plotter that you could see there. So these are like independent entities with their own source code, and the only thing that they share is the information that's stored on the Transma database. So you're fetching the information from the su subjects to display in this analytical interface, right? Uh, what we want to do also is like, case I run an analysis on the smart R, I should be able to fetch the results of that analysis case of course, the user wants, and then they bring these results for third-party analysis, for example. So that would be one level of interoperability that I could think right now. But of course, you need to make sure that um, the the rest um, the rest API that's implemented it gives me also access to the dynamic results created by these uh, analytical workflows. So then I query not only the static data deposited in the Transmat database, but also the results from analysis for specific users. I think this is something that is desirable to, to make um, like interesting workflows to happen. We try to do this uh, using Galax, right? I mean, we have this possibility of fetching the data out of Transmat and then run your, your workflow in the Galax environment. But within the, the, the framework of Transmat, I think, it's something that should should be possible in the near future, or at least as a plan for us. We are talking about the future technologies, right here on this session. So. More questions? No? Yeah. Come. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting comment because um, I think it's like two or three months back, um, Case came to me and he, he said like, okay, um, how about replacing the transmit tree with, uh, with, with the dashboard? But at, uh, at the moment I, I wasn't fully convinced, but now uh, I'm more and more starting to go towards like, okay, how about you just offer the user not just the tree, but also this dashboard that you mentioned with uh, the different options that they ca have. But it's uh, certainly something that's um, somewhere in, in our mind, but it's not, um, at the moment, not actively in the design. But it can always be. It's not necessarily to replace what is there now, but just to, as an entry point, for
Okay, if there are no more questions, I think it's time for lunch nearly. So thank you very much again, and I think uh, we have a bright future for, for all these plugins here. Okay, thank you. <laughs>